Okay, people, this is going to be <clears throat> a second part to my last video. As I stated, this is going to be a sequence of videos because it's so much to try to understand. Uh, so you at least need to try to watch my last video, but really, in all honesty, uh, watch all of them <laughs> to really, truly understand. So, in beginning, I point out, just as I've did in other videos, one of the most important pieces of scripture, which is John 1, verse 1. <clears throat> in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. <clears throat> now, this is clearly stating, as I pointed out before, that God is the Word. He doesn't say He's a man. He doesn't say He's a woman. He is the Word. And I've shown you with the word who that He took and placed who, the Word, His Word, in Scripture, showing that he is the Word, he placed it in there over two, almost 2,000 years ago, showing and proving his omnipotence. <clears throat> I also pointed out with the symbol of medicine and the symbol of pharmacy and the symbol of who? The World Health Organization that he warned us in scripture to be wise as serpents. Now, another piece of scripture I want to add into this now is Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9 through 10. For I am God, and there is no other I am God, and there is none like me. That's important. He clearly points out there is none like him. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done. So what he's pointed out in this scripture is that time doesn't exist to him, basically. He can move forwards and backwards in time and do with the Word what he needs to do with it in its given time, because he is the Word. And I further prove this with the word Theta in that last video. And again, I showed it with Bluetooth, the word Bluetooth. No matter how hard... Satan tries to use his symbolism, whether he goes back using ancient runes like he did with Bluetooth to try to hide that it's his work. No matter how hard he tries, he cannot hide it because God is the Word. And Isaiah 46 verse 9 and 10 shows that time doesn't even exist to him. He can go forward and backwards and do whatever he needs to do with the Word. Revealing all things, just as I pointed out in my last video. <clears throat> but this scripture is also important in this nature because it states, I am God and there is none like me. Now Satan, he was cast out of heaven because of his pride, he wanted to exalt himself above God or as God because he believed himself to be like God. Very prideful. And this is important because uh, since I've pointed out with this science and technology, and I knew it was going to come, that's why this... Uh, this video comes at this time 
because I would have those that argue, well, we are children of God and we're made like God. Well, this scripture in Isaiah clearly warns, there is none like him. To have an understanding of what we are as far as being children of God, you would have to go to Genesis Genesis 1, verse 27. It clearly states, We are made in His image. We are not like God, just as Satan's pride. And this is blasphemous for those who would say that, Oh, we're given uh, science and technology uh, because we're like God. He wants us to be like Him. We're His children. No, we're made in His image. We are not like God. The, the Scripture clearly points that out. So for those who believe they are like God, and this is why we have this science in technology, this is why your eyes see without seeing and your ears hear without hearing just as the scripture says this is blasphemy to God <clears throat> now I pointed out that the scripture really points out time doesn't exist to him he can move forwards and backwards he sees all knows all and can reveal all through the word because he is the word and we're made in his image so what this lets you understand is he is the word and in his image because we're made in his image we are the only creatures on earth that can read speak and understand the word in his word and more importantly we are the only creatures on the planet in his creation that have discernment for the word this is what this mean it doesn't mean we're like him we're in his image because he's the word we're not the word we're uh, humans male and female only he's the word and only he can make it mean what he wants to forwards and backwards in time just as Isaiah points out so in understanding that <clears throat> I want to go to the book of Daniel <clears throat> and again I pointed out Daniel was important in the last video because Daniel was a prophet of his time now the entire book of course all the scripture is important to read uh, if you go through the whole book you learn that Daniel was considered a prophet by even the king of Babylon because of this discernment for the word this knowledge of scripture and not just knowledge of and understanding of scripture but the word itself because in in the book of Daniel he did great things with the word he was able to reveal many things through the word that all the sorcerers and and other uh, other ones of the of the king's court, could not reveal so this made him very important this is what made him a prophet his discernment of the word not just scripture <clears throat> but he also one of his biggest works was to defeat the false idol the fiery furnace that King Nebuchadnezzar built this is going to be very important in the next and later videos. But what I want to stress on now is the last chapter in the book of Daniel. 
At this point, Daniel's work is basically done. Daniel is speaking with God, and God is telling him to seal up the words in the book. He specifically tells Daniel to seal up the words in the book. But then in chapter 5, now Daniel was talking to God all the way to chapter 5. And chapter 5 states, Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood two others, one on each side of the river, and another on the water, standing on the waters in the river. And this, this other one that was standing on the waters in the river was dressed in linen, a robe of linen. So who do we know that walks on water, who's described as that, That would only be Jesus. Because he walked on water to show his own apostles when their faith was little during the storm. But note he had two others. There were two others there, one on each side of the river. So this is where it transitions from him talking to God to him talking to this one standing on the river. Now he refers to this in the later verses after ver uh, verse 5, chapter 12, verse 5. He refers to this one that stands on the waters of the river as Lord. He calls him Lord. He asks him. Because again, and we remember in uh, Matthew, Jesus explains why he speaks in parables. But, one of the ones that is standing on the side of the river that's with Jesus our Lord and Savior, because Daniel clearly calls him Lord, but he doesn't know his name because Jesus didn't come until after Daniel's time. But Daniel does know he is Lord. But this is separate from the first four, four verses where he's speaking to God. But one of these others, one of these other two one on each side of the river, inquires about these things that are being sealed up. And our Lord and Savior, Jesus, explains to him, because this is for the end times, this is only to be revealed in the end times. These words that Daniel's sealing up. Following through at that point in the scripture, in those, in, in those verses, Daniel himself tells Jesus that he does not understand what he's trying to tell, what he's trying to say to him. But these other two that are with Jesus... They don't inquire. There's no question for them. So who would these other two that would be with Jesus, who would they be? And how does it relate to Revelations in the time I'm, I've been pointing it out, pointing out that we're in? Well, you would have to go to Revelations chapter 11. There are two others that are appointed. Two other prophets 
these would be the two that was that were there with Jesus when he when all these events took place with Daniel. And these two other prophets in Revelations 11 are called what more specifically? His two witnesses. This is very important. This is why they're not just called prophets. They're called witnesses. They were there. Jesus showed them the events that took place in Daniel's time. And they will be in the end. And Jesus just didn't show them the events of Daniel's time. He has showed them the events of every time. This is why they are his appointed witnesses. And this uh, chapter of Daniel, these verses show that time does not exist for our Lord and Savior. And he brought his two witnesses to witness, and this is why he calls them his witnesses and why the scripture says it, instead of just prophets. All the other prophets have been named just prophets. These two are witnesses. Jesus has took these two to every event in time that he needed them to see. He took them to see when Abaddon was cast down into the pit, where the pit was located. He let them see and witness the events that happened with the false idol in the fiery furnace. He let them see when Atlantis was destroyed. He allowed them also to see the Tower of Babel and why it was destroyed and why the languages were confused, hence the name Tower of Babel. He allowed uh, them to know why Nimrod was named Nimrod. He's allowed them to see the flood, the deluge. He's allowed them to see every event, including the pyramids being built, how they were built. All these things, these witnesses can reveal because they've been shown. They were there to witness it. Because Jesus' time does not exist for him. He can move forwards and backwards in time. And they these witnesses, remember Daniel was told to seal these words up. And these witnesses were there to get those words. They were given the discernment of the words so that they can reveal in their time, in the end times, which is what Jesus was explaining to Daniel. They were only to be revealed in the end times, and that's why he had his two witnesses with him. Read chapter uh, Daniel chapter 12 thoroughly. Read Revelations chapter 11 thoroughly. Watch the other videos I've showed you. Look at what I've revealed so far. Many things that I've already revealed that no one ever has revealed. And I'll reveal many more things. I'm going to be revealing Atlantis, how it was built, what it was built for, and why it was destroyed. I'm going to be revealing what the fiery furnace was that King Nebuchadnezzar built, the false idol that was made seven times hotter. King Nebuchadnezzar ex ex specifically said he wanted it seven times hotter than normal. And I'm going to reveal that that fiery furnace has been built again. 
without a doubt. And not just one this time. Two's been built this time. So y'all read up, people. Pay attention. Because I want to point out Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9. That thing that hath been, it is which shall be. And that which is done, is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. It's all happened before. All of these works, these fiery furnaces, Satan's work, the corruption of mankind. It's all happened before. That's what that... that is saying. And I'll prove it's happened before and show through the word. Get into your scripture, people. Get some discernment with the word. Wake up to the things around you, all the events that are occurring. Renew your covenant with the Lord. I'm going to close that, give you a little bit of time to di digest it. Uh, this wasn't a very extremely revealing video like I will be making next, but uh, pay attention, pay close attention, and get into the scripture. Say, God bless everybody. <laughs>